Thank you so much, my friends, for taking time to click on this video. And I just want to thank you as well for subscribing, for liking, for sharing, and for joining Melvi Broadcasting Network as we spread the everlasting gospel to the ends of the world. I also just want to thank you for the blessing of resources that God has given you, which you have shared with us. As I've always said, and I want to say again, Melvi's work continues to grow in leaps and bounds, and our gospel footprint has gone around the world. It is for that reason, my friends, that we need more resources to keep this ministry growing and impacting more people, and changing lives along the way. I believe and I feel it, my friends, that God is calling you and us to do something that will impact this world forever. So in the meantime, I just want you to relax, whisper a prayer to God, and enjoy this video. I'll see you on the end of this video. Stay tuned and God bless. Greetings, friends and colleagues, wherever I find you. I hope you're doing good today. My name is Melusin Jalambi from Melvi Broadcasting Network, a divine voice out of Africa. On this channel, we endeavor to bring you the best content, world package that will help you in your journey with Christ and your discovery of the truth as we await his second coming. And out of this great continent of Africa, God is raising up a divine voice and we see it in the people that we interact with and we bring on set. Today we have a special discussion that I want to have with someone very special. They come from very far and that's what makes them special. Mm -hmm. Greetings, my brother, and uh, how are you? Greetings, my elder. Thank you for having me. Great stuff. Yeah. Maybe just introduce yourself to our viewers out there. Tell them who you are, where you come from, and what brings you here. All right. My name is um, Babalo Vala. I am currently serving as the director of End Time Publications. It's a ministry that is focused on preaching the word, that is through the voice, and also through writing. We publish books, magazines, newsletters. So that's what we do, basically. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure to have you pass by here. So for those who may not know, mm -hmm. End Time Publications are best in Cape Town. Please do like their page, follow them. They have powerful End Time messages. So you are in Gauteng today. Mm -hmm. And you're coming all the way from Cape Town. What brings you this far in this side of the country? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually returning from a crusade in Limpopo. Uh -huh. I've been busy for the past week in Pegasford. Wow. Uh, it's that's a mining town, one of the mining towns there. That's a beautiful. I've been there before, mm. many years ago. I was doing projects there okay. with the mining communities there. Mm, mm, I remember mm. they were developing a beautiful township of mining houses as you exit Pegasford on the left side. Mm. So tell us about it. What, what was happening there? Um, so basically, uh, I got an invitation from one of the leaders. Mm -hmm. There's basically five churches. One is an organized church, mm -hmm. the rest are companies. So they invited me to, to assist them in reviving the church. Mm. So they called it a mini crusade. That's oh. why it was a week. All right. So I spent the past few days um, running the crusade mm. uh, with the theme, Now is the Time. Wow, yeah, so that's a powerful thing. It's quite a, uh, a nice experience. Mm. Mm. So what was the Lord placing in your mind on now is the time? Because that's exactly what I'm imagining. When I see you, mm. I think of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remind yeah. me of the sons of Isaac <laughs> who knew the time. So now is the time for what? What was the message? And, yeah. And, and yeah, actually our, our, our theme, like our, our theme, our memory text that we were unpacking is mm -hmm. the, one in, the one you just quoted there, the sons mm -hmm. of Issachar. All right. The book of Chronicles, yes. the Bible says uh, they knew the times, they had understanding of the times, and yes. they knew what Israel ought to do. Mm -hmm. And we, we paired that with Matthew chapter 24. Wow. And we were discussing the signs of the times. But our focus yes. um, was on the families, signs of the times, mm -hmm. how they are playing out in, in the household. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's, that was the, the focal point of the dis discussion how, how throughout the, the week. How was the attendance and the yield of souls? It was well attended. I remember when we started with the crusade, they had prepared the indoors, that is to have the, the meetings inside, mm -hmm. um, indoors. All right. Um, so there was a, a venue prepared? Yes, a venue prepared, which is their church, church building. Mm -hmm. So looking at the weather and my experience in Cape Town in having these open air gatherings, yes. I suggested to the guys that can't we have the service outside? Wow. We ended up having the service outside and many people from the community started, started attending. Wow. So it was well, well attended. Would you know perhaps per, per night how many people were there? Over 100. 
Wow. Yeah, over That's 100. A good number. Every night. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we were running out of chairs even. People were standing. But, but they mm. speak Sipedi there. So you were <laughs> So when I Sipedi, do you yeah. speak Sipedi? No, I, 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 I hear Sipedi now and then. Yeah. yeah, so you were doing English. I was doing English and then yeah. we had a translator. I see. In, in, in Sipedi. In Sipedi, It was yes. quite... People, I could see that people were, 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 were understanding the message. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it was well, yeah, I, I can say that God, mm -hmm. really, we felt mm -hmm. the presence of God. Did you mm -hmm. baptize any? Um, the purpose was not to baptize, but to All preach, right. preparing people for baptism I later. I see. Oh, because it was a mini one. So yeah. it was just like, just lighting a fire. Yes. yes All right. Yes, yes, Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you were telling me offset that your voice went out. Yeah, <laughs> why 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 would an evangelist <laughs> lose his voice at yeah, a time I'm, when you were supposed to be <laughs> preaching? Yeah, no, I was struggling there because what happened was before the crusade, mm. we had another major event there in Cape Town. All right, where we had the Department of the Western uh, the Western Cape yeah. uh, Department of Health that was we were partnering with the department. Mm. That was the first time mm. uh, running a crusade. Not it was not a crusade, but it was a health. Outreach program. A health outreach program, which we call it a temperance crusade. All right. Yeah. So on the same day, I had to leave for, for Pretoria and then from Pretoria go to Limpopo. So you went into a very humid place, mm. Cape Town, and came up where it's dry. Very dry and... <laughs> and then windy. Windy and, and then hot. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I only preached two messages, three in fact. Yeah. So by Tuesday... Ah, my, my voice was gone. Even now, I'm still struggling to recover it. Yeah. So Wednesday, it was bad. Thursday, it was bad. Friday, mm. then on Sabbath, I was like, no, I don't think I'll preach. But I ended up preaching. Wow. Yeah, so, so the Lord helped you. Yeah, God is merciful. Now, now mm. is the time is a very powerful theme. And I mm. think um, looking into what's happening in our country, mm. particularly because you run an end time publications ministry that's really aiming to prepare people for the coming of Christ. That's correct. And looking at what's happening in our country, mm -hmm. South Africa in the mm -hmm. region, mm -hmm. and in the world, it looks like there are so many things that are telling us this, this is the time for something big to happen. Mm -hmm. um, let me paint the picture for you so that I can ask you to maybe share with us your thoughts and reflections building on from that theme. Mm -hmm. So South Africa has transitioned in many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year we had one of our most violent uprisings by the citizens of this country versus mm. service delivery, access to services mm. and jobs and whatever. And out of that movement, I've seen a mushrooming of vigilante type of mm. um, revolutionary type of movements. Mm. I could cite one of them, which is the very famous Dudula. Mm -hmm. But Dudula has a specific mission to say our problems in South Africa are caused by illegal foreigners. Mm -hmm. and, and it backed me the question, how do the foreigners who are 4% of this country become responsible for 45% of unemployment? Okay. Therefore, it does seem like our problem is not human beings. Mm. Because that argument for me falls flat. Mm -hmm. Even if you chase every foreigner out of this country, they're mm. only 4%. Mm. What are you going to do with the 40-something percent of your unemployed people? And mm. how does chasing someone from a street corner create a job mm. for someone who doesn't. I mm. know you are big on labor movements <laughs> and issues around access to economic resources and the struggle of the classes as we mm. call them in the Marxism mm. philosophy and mm. the like. But it does seem to me besides that, mm. we also have just almost are coming or emerging but still under one of the worst pandemic. Mm. My kids were talking the other day and they were saying we've never lived in a pandemic. This mm. is the first one. You and I grew up in the HIV and AIDS pandemic mm -hmm. and the TB pandemic, mm -hmm. but our kids have experienced COVID, mm -hmm. which not only was a, a, a pandemic that changed the social structure of our communities, mm. but it changed even the workplace. And also it changed even the religious space. Mm. So this thing was not a small thing in mm. the prophetic lens. Mm. It definitely nudged the world in a certain direction. In the last month or so, mm. 2022, Okay. We have experienced one of the, what was anticipated to be the mm. third world war. Mm -hmm. All right. And not only that, mm -hmm. as we speak right now, uh, I received an, a message from one brother who's in Zimbabwe who's saying the country's officially in a drought season. Mm -hmm. So they're coming out of COVID 
the economy has collapsed. Mm. Now they have a drought. And you look at what happened in Mozambique last year. Mm. We had floods. And some of these floods were even in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We had houses and trucks and businesses in KZN being swept away. Mm. In in floods happened in places we never mm. anticipated them. Mm. And so if you look at this landscape, mm -hmm. understanding it from the, the, the message that the Lord has helped you to preach in Beggarsford, what does this mean? Okay. Yeah, you have touched on many issues. Yeah, perhaps I should start um, with the issue of social unrest. Yes. Because I believe this is something that was prophesied in the Bible. So that's what I want us to look at now. Right. Um, there, 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 there are three main influences the Bible identifies in prophecy according to the book of Revelations. Um, you have Revelations 13, Revelations 11, Revelation 17 and 18. Yeah, so mm -hmm. let me just... All right, let me start with Revelation chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 11 speaks about uh, the beast that comes from the bottomless pit, mm -hmm. um, which is, we have come to realize or know, it's the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so with the French Revolution, one of the key features or defining attributes of the French Revolution mm -hmm. was this idea of anarchy. Confusion. Anarchy, which yeah. is rebellion against the state. state laws and also divine laws. Mm. So another term we can use to describe the French Revolution is what they call antinom antinomianism, yes. which is a rebellion against divine yes. uh, order of things. Mm. So according to prophecy, let me just quote this statement from the book Education. We are told that at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human. Mm. The, centralizing, the centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combination of the of, of, the, of, of the few, for the enriching of the few mm. at the expense of the many, the combination of the poorer classes mm. for the defense of their interests and claims, the worldwide, the worldwide dissemination mm. of the same teachings, the spirit of unrest, I forgot that part, the spirit mm. of unrest, a riot and bloodshed, mm. the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings yeah. that led to the French Revolution, all are now tending to involve the world in a struggle similar to that mm. which convulsed France. So I will, ha I will highlight from this statement four yeah. elements. Mm -hmm. The first one is antinomianism, mm -hmm. which is anarchy. The second one mm -hmm. is uh, monopoly capitalism. All right. You know, centralization of wealth and power, mm -hmm. um, political power, economic power. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the third one is now the social unrest, which mm. comes, which is a reaction to that system, yes. which comes in the form of trade unions, Mm. political movements, revolutions, yes. and also now the revolutions that is sparked by the people. Mm. I call these leaderless revolutions. All right. Um, these protests mm -hmm. for service delivery and all these things. They just, they just mushroom from anywhere. From anywhere. Yes. They are leaderless. Yeah. yeah well, so this is, there's, there's an outcry. Or we can say the leadership emerges from the unrest. From the unrest, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's, that's the better way of putting it. Mm -hmm. So I believe this thing of Tudula, xenophobia, mm -hmm. All of these, we mm. can group them and, and place, actually place them as one of the character of what is being spoken of there. As the spirit that is mm. permeating our community mm. now. All right. People are not happy with their social and economic standing. Mm. And they are using or looking for, 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 for justifications. Yeah. And the, 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 yeah, they, they're looking for justifications. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so that's, that's where I will put it. And also, that's, that's the first part. And then Revelation 11 verse 18 also explains this. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, And the nations were angry, and, yeah. their, and thy wrath is come. It's come the yes. anger of the nations. What we are experiencing now is the anger of the nations. Mm. Social unrest, the wars mm. in Ukraine, World War I, World War II, yeah. the Cold War. All of these things mm. uh, are a fulfillment of that particular prophecy in Revelation chapter 11 verse 18. Yes. Now, there's a chronology in that particular verse. Says mm. the nations are angry, mm. and then God gets angry. The question mm. is, what is it that these nations are going to do? Let me actually read it so All that right. we can benefit from its prophecy. Okay. Uh, Revelation 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry. Okay. And thy wrath is come. Mm -hmm. And the time of the dead, mm. that they should be judged, mm. and that thou should give us the reward unto thy servants, the prophets, mm -hmm. and to the saints, mm -hmm. and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and thou should destroy them which destroy the earth. 
All right. Mm. So that prophecy, as we can, we can, we, we can, we can split it in through in three parts. Mm -hmm. The first part, the nations are angry. Mm -hmm. The second part is God gets angry. Mm, the so the question come. is, what is it that the nations are going to do, which will cause God to be angry? Mm. Now, between the anger of the nations and the anger of God, there is an event that we are waiting for which is, will be sparked by the anger of the nations. Right now, people are not... Okay, let me just quickly go through this. Yeah. Revelation chapter 13 speaks about the anger of the nations towards the people of God. Yes. Which is the mark of the beast crisis. You will not, you yes. will not be able to buy or sell yes. unless you worship the beast or the image of the beast. Mm. So between the anger of the nations and the anger of God mm. is the anger of the people against... Anger of society against the people of God. So we could say... When the world gets frustrated with whatever mm -hmm. is go they are going through, mm -hmm. hearts of men, you know, failing yeah. for fear when they mm -hmm. look at the things that are befalling them. Yes. And then they, they use the children of God as a scapegoat. Yes, yes. That yes. time is coming. Mm -hmm. We're getting mm -hmm. into there. Yeah. But what shall awaken that spirit is the unrest it's we are seeing. It's the unrest. It's the rebellion mm -hmm. against laws mm -hmm. and the state. It's preparing us for that time. For that time. All right. Just to inter, 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 interject there, there's a problem with human anger. And mm. here is the problem. Mm. Because the Bible says they're getting angry and God gets angry. Mm. And then the anger of God now is, um, it, it, oh yeah, it comes in different mm -hmm. forms. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not going to go into that mm -hmm. now. But um, if you go to the book of James, for example, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, we must be angry. Mm -hmm. But in our anger, make Let sure you don't sin. sin. Yes. You know? And it also says, don't allow the sun to go down with your anger. And now in James chapter 1, fascinating verse. I think it's mm. verse 18. The Bible mm -hmm. says, let every man be swift to speak. Yes, but uh, slow to anger. S slow to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, s swift to hear. Yeah. Slow to speak. Mm -hmm. And slow to anger. Mm. Why? Because the wrath of man does not accomplish the righteousness, righteousness of God. Of God. Yes. The righteousness of God. Yes. Uh, yes. So... Uh, the problem with human anger is we can we can get angry. In our mm. anger, there is this element of unrighteousness. Mm. However, God can get angry and still be righteous. Mm. In fact, the anger of God is an expression of the of of of, of his righteousness, of his justice. Mm. Yeah. So that's the problem with human anger. Mm. Yeah. So 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 so, so this so, is what these things are leading us to. Yeah. But let's let's take a step back and say there is a force behind all of this. Mm -hmm. And hence we talk about the great controversy yes. theme. Mm. That for any member of Dudula who thinks that a foreigner who has been allowed by the government is the reason why they are not employed, mm. they need to realize that hatred of a foreigner mm. is actually driven mm. by a power mm. that we don't see mm. but is present with mm. us, mm. which is the enemy the yes. arch enemy, the mm. devil himself, mm. and that he is behind most, if not all, of these unrests. Mm. So we must squarely lay the challenges mm. we are facing, not to God, yes. not to a foreigner, but to an enemy. So talk a little bit about the great controversy theme as we see it unfolding, even in the situation in Russia. Mm. 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 If you go to the book of Ephesians, um, Ephesians chapter 6, it says, we must be strong, strong in the Lord. Mm. Um, and we must put on the whole armor. Let me, let me, let, let me read it, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, right, I have it here, chapter 6, verse 10. It says, finally, mm -hmm. my brothers, mm. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. might yes. Put on the whole armor oh, of God, God that mm -hmm. you may be able to stand, stand against the wiles of, of the devil. The devil yes. Then verse 12 says, for we wrestle not yes. against, against flesh, flesh and blood. And blood. Yeah. So, mm. But against principalities, against powers, powers. against the rulers of the darkness of this world against mm. spiritual wickedness in high, high places. places. So the first thing that Paul does is to identify the enemy. Yes. You see, in the political space, they identify the enemy. Socialist, mm. the communist, identifies an enemy as capitalism. Mm. In the capitalist uh, space, ideology, they identify an enemy as a communist. Mm. However, like, I mean, EFF identifies an enemy in the form of which I want to mention, maybe the ANC, because yeah. of the ideology and all of that. Yeah. Or the DA, if you please. Yes. So, you see, even in the, in, in the conflict, in the, in, 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 in the physical space, people mm. have a tendency of identifying the enemy. Yeah. However, in the spiritual context, God says, 
God also identifies the enemy. Mm. And the enemy is not flesh and blood, mm. but it's spiritual. Yes. Now, for you to fight a spiritual enemy, you need spiritual weapons. Mm. Um, and that is why the Bible admonishes us uh, when he speaks. Um, he says, uh, he admonishes us. Mm -hmm. And he says, look, put on the, ha put the on whole armor of God. The armor. Uh, yeah. You are in the conflict. So put on the right uh, weapons mm. to fight, the mm. right arsenal to, con to, to, to fight. Mm. Now, identifying the enemy. So since we know the enemy is spiritual, we need the right weapons. I mean, also in the book of mm. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, yeah. it says, um, though we are in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, mm. for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, carnal but, but mighty, to God, mighty through God to the mm. pulling down of strongholds. Yes. So the, 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 there is this sense that we are finding in the Bible that yeah. we must put on the right weapons yeah. so that we can fight the spiritual yeah. enemy. So this enemy, uh, the enemy that is this spiritual enemy, we can mm. say it's Satan. Yeah. And Satan works through various agencies mm. or agents. Yes. He has agents in the spiritual context, in the spiritual realms. Yes. The Bible speaks about high places. Mm. So there are different ranks in the spiritual context where Satan operates. Mm. Even in the literal space. In the human, human space. agents. Yeah. So he influences humanity through humanity. Mm. That's how God also works. He influences another human being through another human being. Yeah. So it's mind to mind. Yes. All right. So there is this statement now that comes to mind in the great controversy mm. where we are told that Satan delights in war. Mm. Satan delights in war for it excites the worst passions, passions of the us. human soul. Yeah. And then by so doing, when the passions are aroused, the worst crimes will emanate. Apart from that, mm. it will lead people's minds away from the most important work of preparing yeah, the souls. For preparing the souls for, 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 yes. for another world. Mm. So this is why Satan uh, instigates mm. uh, people against each other yeah. so that the minds may be taken away from the work of preparation. Mm. So you also touched on xenophobia. I need to talk about this briefly. Yeah. Um, xenophobia is not a new phenomenon. Mm. Uh, it doesn't matter what you call it and how mm. you phrase it. It's not a new phenomenon. Mm. If you go to the book of um, uh, Psalm, uh, Genesis chapter 19, the mm. Bible speaks about the angels that God sent to visit the people of Sodom and Gomorrah mm. to go and check and investigate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. their conduct. Mm -hmm. And then people continued with business as usual. They lived yeah. the way they were living. When mm -hmm. they saw strangers, coming in. visitors coming in, they saw that these people are coming to judge us. They did not know from which world they were coming from because mm -hmm. they were, those angels took on a human form. Yeah. So this was God's means to rescue, I believe, the people of Sodom. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from that, if you go now to the book of Leviticus, Numbers up there, the Bible speaks about God's regard for foreigners or yes. strangers. Who are, in your, who are sojourning in your land. Who are, who are, who are sojourning in your land. Mm. And God gives some serious warnings there. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, he gives and, and, some, and he says, you were once foreigners. You were once foreigners. And you know what pain it is to be a foreigner. Therefore, exactly. when someone comes into your exactly. land, be very careful how exactly. you deal with them. Exactly. So could we be safe to say God is a God of foreigners? He's a God of foreigners. Because... If you can look at how he groups foreigners or strangers, mm. he groups them in the same category as widows. Mm. The vulnerable widows are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Orphans are vulnerable. Yes. Uh, strangers are vulnerable. So they are grouped in the same. Mm. So when James, when 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 James, very fascinating, when James talks about true religion, he says mm. true religion mm. is expressed yes. in Christian service, which is demonstrated in taking care of the poor and the well, needy, mm -hmm. of the widows and the strangers. Mm. And you can also add the strangers, which yeah. is the foreigners. All right. Yes. All right. I want, to, I want to get to a point here. But maybe before you get there, okay. I want us to settle this very clearly and we'll right. move on. Therefore, mm -hmm. when a nation fails to treat foreigners mm -hmm. who are sojourning in their land, mm. I don't care by what means they arrived there, mm whether they are running away from their masters mm. or from their stranger in your country. How you deal with them is a barometer of your spirituality. That is correct. And could it be that it shows that you have abdicated your God-given spirituality as a nation? Could it, be a, could it be also a reason why God will judge a nation? 
I would say so. If you go to the book of Malachi, I'm actually looking for this text in the book of Malachi. Mm -hmm. uh, God promises here to judge the world. Mm. It's a very solemn warning. Mm. Um, Malachi. In a period of apostasy, by the way. Mm. <laughs> Malachi mm. chapter 3 verse 1, it says, Behold, mm -hmm. I will send my messenger before I, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. Mm. And, the Lord, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Mm. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Mm. Now, this is two, now this verse has two applications. Mm -hmm. First application is when Jesus came, the preparer of the way was John the Baptist. Yes. And the Lord came to his temple, which was the building mm. which was built at the time. Mm. However, this also applies to the issue of 1844. All right. Um, all right. Yes. So yeah. people thought that the Lord is coming mm. Uh, mm. to earth. But mm. no, no, he was coming to his temple. He was moving from one apartment to the other. To the other, yes. However, there's a work of preparation that must be done here. Mm. All right, let's go to verse 2. Mm -hmm. It says, But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he shall appear? Mm. For he is like a refiner's fire, and a, like a fuller's fuller soap. soap yeah. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Mm. The high priest is now sitting. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, the priest, the mm -hmm. royal priesthood, mm -hmm. and purge them as gold and silver, mm -hmm. that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Mm. Now listen to verse 4. Mm -hmm. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of, of old, old, as in the former years. Verse 5 mm. says, And I will come to you yes. to judgment, mm. and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerer Amagwech. All right. And against the adulterers, mm -hmm. against that. false swearers, mm -hmm. against those that oppress the hiling in his wages. All right. Work, labor workers. Issues. <laughs> labor issues. How you handle your workers. <laughs> yes. Trade unions. This is mm. where it comes in. Mm. All right. And then it says, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hiling in his wages, mm -hmm. the widow. Yes, the vulnerable widows. The yes. vulnerable widows and the fatherless. That's the orphans. And the orphans. Mm -hmm. And those that turn aside the stranger. Wow. Foreigners from his right and mm. fear not me, says the Lord of hosts. Mm. What is the right of a foreigner, if you may ask? Mm. Safety. Exactly. Protection. Safety, peace. Protection. Safety, peace, protection. Yeah. And these are things which the government, by law, is mm. mandated to provide. Even the United Nations Charter on Refugees mm -hmm. says... Anyone who walks into your country for whatever mm. reason mm. must be protected must and they protected. have the right to certain, they have, they have a right to access certain services. That's correct. Mm. I mean, uh, this, this, um, 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 so, 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 so I think my question is settled. God does draw near us to judge us. To judge us. So yes. South Africa must be very careful. Very careful. The warning of the word of the Lord is when you don't respect the foreigner in your land, mm -hmm you are actually asking God to draw near to judge you. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, there's another verse that comes to mind mm -hmm. in the book of uh, Ezekiel 16, verse 49. It says, Behold, this was the sin of thy daughter Sodom. Mm -hmm. Pride, yes. fullness of bread, idleness. and abundance of idleness was in her. Yeah. And she did not strengthen the, the hand, hand of the of poor, the poor yes. and the needy. So the social conditions of Sodom mm. and Gomorrah Cause God to visit Sodom and Gomorrah with his judgments. Wow. Apart from that, the way they dealt with the strangers that had visited Lot mm. <laughs> or mm. the people of Sodom, because yeah. primarily they were not visiting Lot, mm -mm. they were visiting the people of Sodom. Yeah. But Lot is the one who, who, who took a step to call these people into his household. Apart from that, mm. um, the Bible also says in the book of Luke, Chapter 19, signs of the times. Mm -hmm. Luke says as it was in the days of Noah, Noah. and so shall it be. And he mm -hmm. also says as it was in the days, as of it Lord. was in the days of Lord, Sodom and Gomorrah, and so shall it be. So yeah. we must be very careful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's come to this um, section of the Bible, which I believe, because you've mentioned the book of Luke mm -hmm. and you've mentioned the signs of the times. All this political, social, economic unrest that mm -hmm. we are seeing in the world. The Bible, if I understand well, mm. tells us that it's going to exist, if not get worse, mm. as we get to the end of time. Mm. So the collapse of economies mm. is going to be a, a key sign of the end of times. And by the way, mm. the very day we went into our first lockdown, mm. do you remember what the other headline was in the newspapers? South Africa was declared a junk economy. Mm. Uh, it's been two years now. Mm. Look at the prices of how things are going high. Mm. 
there has been an there has been an announcement by some of our leading economists in this country because I've been watching the news. They are saying if we don't rein the lack of service delivery in mm. this country, mm. we are actually on the slippery slope mm. to a collapsed economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, j just check it in the news. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. If you have more municipalities in South Africa failing to deliver basic services, mm. such as clean water, you mm. would know about this mm. because you're in Gauteng mm. mm. on a study that is very important in your field. Yes, yes How yes, we yes. use water. Yes, yes, yes. Now, yes. if we don't deliver quality services, mm -hmm. the, the specialists are saying we are actually on the fa pathway. Mm -hmm. We are fast moving towards a failed economy. Mm. When you look at the level of corruption, Mm. in the government where a service that should be costing us five rand the municipality ends up paying 150 rand mm. we have ministers here in this country who have resigned because mm. there are certain reports that have flagged them as being involved in corruption mm. this the whole state capture inquiry mm was an inquiry into a cancer that's destroying this country. So mm. the signs are there mm. that we are moving towards somewhere. But Jesus gave us a response in Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. I want us to dwell maybe on that section okay. as, we, as we come to the last part of our program. Matthew chapter 24, I want us to just maybe focus on 14 verses and I want you to give me your your perspectives here in terms of okay. what are the things that Jesus warned us about or gave us as indicators and markers of the signs of the end of the world or the mm -hmm. end of the age mm -hmm. and his coming. Okay. And I want us to discuss that in the context of all these events, including the war in Ukraine mm -hmm. and many other wars we're seeing in Africa mm -hmm. where more people are dying mm -hmm. and the world is not concerned about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So Matthew right. 24. All right, so in Matthew chapter 24, mm -hmm. um, there are three main questions that Matthew is answering. Mm. Uh, that is according to verse 3. Mm -hmm. Remember the story, he enters the temple here. Yeah. And after he enters, for the, he ent he ent he enters the temple here mm -hmm. for, the, for the last time. Mm. And he leaves it never to come back to the temple again. Mm. And as he leaves the temple, he makes these declarations or proclamations of the doom that is to befall Jerusalem. Mm. And then as he leaves the temple, one of the disciples uh, shows him the beauty of the temple. And as he is beholding the temple, like he's praising the temple, and Christ mm. says, look, do you see what you, see, what you are seeing here? A day is going to come that not even one, one stone, stone shall be left upon another. But everything shall be destroyed. Mm. And then the Bible says they went up to the mountain of olives. Mm. And they're looking down now on Jerusalem. At that city. Yes. At that city. Mm. Uh, you can imagine the lights and everything, the sounds, because it was a religious feast at that time. Mm -hmm. So the people were high in spirit. And then in verse 3, mm -hmm. as they were sitting on this mountain, the Bible says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell mm -hmm. us, when shall these things be? All and right. when shall be the sign of their coming? Mm -hmm. That is the second question. Yes. When shall these things be? The yeah. destruction of the temple. Mm -hmm. The second question is, what shall be the sign of your coming? Mm -hmm. Question number three and of the end of the, of world. the world. So from chapter 24, chapter 25, mm -hmm. Jesus is answering those three questions. Signs yes. of his coming yeah. and also the signs of the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, mm -hmm. But I want us to focus on just the first 14 verses. All right. Because That's in my do. studying, I've realized that in those 14 verses, mm -hmm. Jesus gives a synopsis. If it was an academic paper, we say that's his abstract. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> to the yeah. whole thesis. Mm. And he ends it by signing off mm. the very reason why the world will end. So maybe mm. walk us through some of the key take-home messages you're getting from that verse. All right. One of, section. All right. The first thing that Christ outlines as a sign of his coming mm -hmm. is the issue of deception. Mm -hmm. Deception that comes in different forms. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, the, 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 the extreme part of the deception yeah. is when people... Uh, who will be coming as representatives of Christ, not just representatives of yeah, Christ, yeah. but they will say they are the Christ. Wow. In so, fact, why don't you read those three verses? <laughs> all right. To our viewers out there, I hope you're following and you are being blessed by this discussion. Let's read together the three deceptions Jesus mentions. I think the first one is in verse uh, 5. Okay, verse 5. Verse 5, yes. It okay. says, uh, For many 
shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. That's number one. That's number I one. I think the next time you mention that, it's, um, no, there's verse 11. Okay. Verse 11 says, and many false prophets shall rise mm -hmm. and shall deceive many. Mm. There is the word deception again. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. again, I think it's on verse, um, verse 24, mm. for, yeah, 23 and 24. Mm. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lord, he is, Lord, here is Christ, or there, believe mm -hmm. it not. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, mm. for many shall rise, many sh for they shall rise false Christs mm -hmm. and false prophets mm -hmm. and shall show great signs mm -hmm. and great wonders in so much that if it were possible, mm -hmm. they shall deceive the very elect. Even the very elect. Mm. Deception is a phenomenon that the church has struggled with throughout the ages. Mm. Uh, I just want to bring this dimension here. Mm -hmm. When Christ speaks about the the, the, the struggle that the church is going to have with deception mm. throughout the course of history, mm. he does so by summarizing it into the seven churches. Yes. From the, from the very first establishment of the first church under Ephesus, mm. the Nicolaitans, yes. the first apostles, yes. under Smyrna, Pergamos, yes. up until the Odisha, the church has had to deal with deceptions. Mm. To the I, point that this deception ends up being something we believe. We believe. Because and when you look at Laodicea, mm -hmm. the church now is telling itself yeah. that we are like this Self when we are not. Yes, that's yes. correct. That's mm. correct. Uh, 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 I mean, in, in, with, um, what do you call this? With, 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 um, with the false uh, prophets. Mm -hmm. I just want to read this part. Yeah. Uh, there's a thought that just escaped my mind here. I mentioned earlier that mm -hmm. um, this thing of false prophecies, uh, false prophets, has different forms. Yes. And then the greatest form or manifestation thereof mm. is when people actually say they are, are the Christ. They are, they, are, they are the Christ. So this uh, thing of, um, uh, of, of, of false prophets is a, it, 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 it's, it's a struggle between mm. truth and mm. error, which mm. is nothing other than the great controversy. Yes. The outplaying of the great controversy. Mm. Because all the generations mm. had to struggle with the issue of truth mm. and error, deception mm. and truth falsehood and the truth mm. so that's what this thing is about and then the scary part it says that it it if it were it shall even deceive if it were possible if it if it were possible mm. even the very elect will be deceived, will be deceived. so the question I, 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 the question I, the question we should ask then is mm. what causes people to be deceived or I like think what causes people to be deceived i think for me it's a desire for power okay without an affinity to godliness. Okay. Because power mm -hmm. without the presence of God mm -hmm. corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and the desire to own. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. Lucifer came yeah, to Jesus was, and said, All right. You see those stones? Mm -hmm. If you are the son, if, yeah. as mm -hmm. if he was not, mm -hmm. that's an illusion yeah. of identity. Yeah. So, if you don't know yourself, mm -hmm. And who you are, yes, you will be sold to things that belong to you, <laughs> yeah. and you will be deceived. That is true. So the desire to want to attain power and mm. to be seen to be the one with power, with power. and to be the one who unlocks mm. vaults of power, yeah, is what gets people deceived. Let me just interject. There's a powerful point: the desire for power. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can think of uh, Eve in the Garden of Eden. Mm. The Bible says the snake spoke to him mm. and then said, "You shall be like gods." The desire to be higher. <laughs> to be higher. Power. <laughs> yeah. And then she was deceived. Her eyes were opened. Yeah. Uh, of course, the we know the catastrophic thing, um, The uh, other thing we see as well on mm. the story of Eve yeah. is that the Bible makes it very clear mm. that after the conversation, mm. she actually looked and said, this tree is actually good. Mm. So be careful what thoughts you entertain. After that is true. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Another, another, another point I would like to bring across mm. is... is, is is, is, is in the book of 2 Thessalonians. Mm. What will cause the, <laughs> the very elect to be deceived? Mm. It's a very important question I think we should answer. I, I, I like the fact that the way you've put it, mm. the desire for power, yeah. the second aspect is mm. this one, the one that Thessalonians speaks about. Mm. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, mm -hmm. let me just read this, yeah. the work of the Antichrist. Now this is the institution, ah. the institution ah. that yes. Satan uses 
in the end of time to deceive the believers. Mm. Not only the, yes, the believers, because the Bible says here, um, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except they come a falling, falling away first. Away. That's apostasy. Yes. And that man of sin be revealed, the son mm. of perdition. Now, mm. look, now, now look at this, verse 4. Mm. He opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God. He is sitting in the temple of God. That's a deception. Deception. Sitting in the temple, showing himself that he is God. When he's now, not. He's not. So the temple that is spoken of here is not the ancient temple mm. in Jerusalem, but mm. it's Christian tomb. Mm. Yeah. All right. Verse 5, it says, remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Let me just pass mm. this part. Mm. Verse 7 says, now this deception is very mysterious. Yeah. yeah. It's mysterious. Mm. It says the mystery and it works iniquity. iniquity and then it says yes. for the mystery of iniquity is already working. Mm. Only he, he works through he worked through the Nicolaitans. Yes. All right. Only yes. he who now works will let until let. he be taken out of the way. Verse 8 says, and then shall the wicked be revealed, mm. whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. Mm. Actually, there's a powerful point right there. But yeah. let me jump it. Verse 9 says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan mm. with all power and signs and lying wonders yes, and, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Mm. So the reason why even the very elect will be deceived is that we don't love the truth. Wow. We've not settled into the truth. We haven't settled into the truth. You know, I was doing, mm. I don't want to say the place or the name. Okay. I was uh, training a group of people on media, mm -hmm. and I asked them, what is the purpose why we're doing this? Mm -hmm. People say the different answers. I said, no, 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 no. The reason is because of Revelation 14, verse 6 to 12, and this gospel shall be preached unto mm -hmm. all the worlds. Mm -hmm. So I asked, can someone just recite for me the three angels' messages? Mm -hmm. Just three. The people who are doing this work, this media work, sure. don't know what the message is and the reason Ish. why we're doing it. Ish. It's a deception. Mm -hmm. It's a deception. Mm. You and I can sit here and have a wonderful discussion. But if we don't know the why mm. of the what mm. and the how, we will be deceived. Mm. Isn't it true that in this very same analysis, I think it's Matthew chapter 7, mm. Jesus says, many shall come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, we mm. did great and mm. wonderful mm. works. But Jesus who profess and say, I never knew you, mm -hmm. deception. Mm -hmm. So it is very possible for, for people out there, for you and I, mm. to do this work, yeah. to be mighty in the scriptures, yeah. but not know Christ. Yeah, that is true. So I guess in this discussion, mm. we are posing the question, do you know Christ? Ish. Is he in mm. your heart? Mm. Is he the one who is leading you? Who, who, sure. who, who is in your heart and your mm. mind? I guess mm. that's the question mm. we have, because deception yeah. tends to present to you all the flowery, powerful mm. symbols mm of attaining it and having mm. it mm. when you don't have it. Mm. 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 That's mm. the challenge of, mm. of having power without the godliness thereof. Conversion. Yes. Mm. So deception is one area mm. we've seen that. So Matthew yeah. also talks about another very important mm -hmm. sign of the times for our end. I think I want to look at verse 7, Matthew 24, verse 7. Let's talk seven. a little bit about this one. I mean, we've already mentioned okay. one of the things here. It says, for nations shall rise against nations. Oh, yes. Oh, In yes. fact, it starts at verse 6. There mm. will be rumors of mm. wars. Mm. Uh, don't be troubled. These are just the, they will come to pass, but mm. the end is not yet. But then he says, there shall be nations rising against nation and mm. kingdoms against kingdom. Mm. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Mm. Yeah, so this prophecy, I believe, I mean, mm -hmm. if we are to be honest and have an honest assessment of history, mm -hmm. we will know that this prophecy has been fulfilled. Mm. Speaking about nations rising against nations, yes. rumors of wars, mm. and then it also speaks about kindred rising against kindred. That's mm. Those are ethnic conflicts, Yes. not national conflicts. Yeah, for, for example, local the local level. <laughs> Yeah. Village level. Village level tribes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Xenophobia falls under that, I believe. Mm. Uh, ethnic mm. conflicts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is one of the prophecies the Bible In speaks fact, about. There's a, there's a prophecy. I, well, I don't want to call it a prophecy, mm -hmm. but there's a prediction. Let me call yeah. it that. By one of the leading economic predictors of trends in South Africa who mm. says, mark my words, he says it very strongly mm. on national television. Mm -hmm. When we are done with the foreigners mm. in this country, Sure. We're going to come back to each other. Yes. 
the Khosas, yes. and the Zulus, and the Sutus, yes. and the Pedis, mm. and the vendors. He says we're going to come after each other mm. because chasing away the foreigner will not solve the problem. The problem. That yeah. is true. That yeah. is true. So, so nations rising against nations uh, and tribes. I mean, we had world, we had World War One. Even mm. before that, we had the Crusades. All of that. Yes. That was the, that was a fulfillment of this prophecy. And Africa had its own shares of Umfekanes and uh, Chimurenga wars and many others. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um, um, uh, the other example: World War One, World mm. War Two, the Cold War, and all of that. Even the war in Ukraine is a fulfillment of mm. this prophecy. Mm. Yeah. There is another aspect here. For me, it's very, very fascinating when I look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at the list. Yeah. Things that are listed here. Mm. War. Mm -hmm. If you can look at war in the, in the biblical context, like a yeah. definition of it in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. another word for war um, is sword. 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 Mm. Yeah. Raising of a sword. Sword, number one. I'll explain it just now, what I mean mm. by that. The second aspect you see here mm -hmm. is pestilence. Yes. The third aspect is famine. Are you aware that these three things... They follow one after the They other. follow one after the other. Yes. There's a pattern. There's a chronology right uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. One is a trigger, the other one is a flood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can call it biological warfare. Yes. But even in the biological warfare, there is pestilence. Exactly. There will be hunger, starvation. Do yeah. you know they were showing pictures of children mm. in Ukraine? As a, I think they were trying to bring the human side of mm. the story to say, please be, be nice to Ukraine. Mm. You remember Chernobyl, the nuclear mm. I remember. station? Yeah, I remember. When that thing blew out, mm. they were showing the aftermaths of, of mm. Chernobyl mm. nuclear disaster. Mm that it resulted in people who mm. are disabled mm. and, all, 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 and all of the things. Mm. And they said, therefore, you must be gentle because mm. this country has already gone through serious strife before. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So with the th three things that I mentioned here, mm -hmm. they have a there's a chronology. Mm -hmm. in, in my study of the Bible, they are never isolated. Mm. They always move as a package. Yes. Um, and the scary part ne, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Jeremiah, mm. God says, these are my four sore judgments yes. on the yes. earth. Yeah. Um, uh, another person might be asking, you, so God, God is judging us with famine? Mm. He's judging us with pestilences? But, yeah. but just looking at a natural mm. strategic planning point of view, mm. when there's war, people don't plant crops. Yes. And when there's war, there's often destruction of the soil and mm -hmm. chemicals thrown into the ground mm, 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 and mm. and so if you can't plant and your soil is contaminated mm. what's going to follow it's hunger hunger and after hunger what follows unrest mm -hmm. because people are fighting over the little that is that is remaining that's available mm, mm, yeah mm, so mm, they mm. come as a package i definitely agree with as you. a package it's yeah. it's it's, it's a, and ezekiel also says it's evil mm. remember isaiah says god i create darkness yeah god says yeah and i create evil I, I create yeah. and I kill. And I kill. And I create evil. That's mm. what God says. Um, now, people misunderstand that text to think that when he says I create evil, he's referring to sin. Mm. It's not sin. But the evil he's referring to here are the things we have mentioned here yeah. in the Hebrew mindset. When we don't follow his law, mm. he withdraws and what we are left with yeah. is a situation where there's darkness and there's crime, there's bloodshed. Exactly. But, exactly. but, but I know you're looking for the text there, but yeah. I wanted us to move on to another point. Okay. Um, Jesus here mentions pestilences uh, and earthquakes mm -hmm. in different places. It looks like environmental issues and climate change is going to be a major theme of discussion because of what's actually happening in the world as a judgment of God. Mm. Not as a way we have mi misused the world. Maybe part of it is misusing the world, but it's actually a judgment of God when we see the environment giving in. Okay, let me touch on those two points. Yeah. People's actions. Mm -hmm. And uh, people's actions, that is, they are the ones who are causing, causing deliberately, these, these shifts. like deliberately, mm -hmm. tempering with the environment. If you go to the book of Revelation 11, verse 18, mm. it speaks, speaking about people. God is going to judge those who destroy, who destroy the, earth. the earth. Exactly. And also, you have Isaiah, Isaiah 24, verse mm. 5, it says there uh, that people have changed the ordinances. Mm. And they have transgressed the divine laws. Mm. And because of that, and they changed the everlasting covenant. Yeah. Broken the everlasting covenant, changed mm. the ordinances, the ordinance of the sun, yeah. the ordinance of the moon, moon. and the stars. Yeah. How nature operates. And the Bible says the earth is defiled because, because of that. Yes. Yeah, well, so this is yeah. people's actions deliberately yeah. through various means. Mm. Deforestation brought mm. about by the industrial 
industrial Evolution, development yeah. uh, projects. Mm. As an example, you can, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the contamination of the water reserves yeah. Yeah. and uh, through mining. I mean, you have acid mine drainage, which is mm -hmm. a major problem mm -hmm. in, 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 in Pretoria yeah. and Chopek and all these places. They took the gold and left us with the toxic soils. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these are as a consequence of people's actions. Mm. Like that is they are deliberately doing yeah. it. Yeah. And then the other aspect you have mentioned, mm -hmm. um, where God now promises to destroy the earth yeah. through judgments. Yes. Now, the judgments of God, this is very fascinating when you look at it from the book of Revelations perspective. Mm -hmm. The Bible says there, God begins to pour out the seven last plagues. Mm -hmm. Seven last plagues. Mm -hmm. the, if you can check the seven last plagues, what they do, they leave the world in a desolate state. Yeah. So by the time Jesus comes after the seventh plague, yes, he finds the world in a desolate place. Yes. Look at what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah says, I saw the world yes. without form, mm. void. So in other words, the purpose of the plagues, if you can do a, a diligent study on this, mm -hmm. is to bring the world yeah. in its original form because before God created everything. There was chaos. There was chaos. Earth yeah. was without form and yeah. void. Mm -hmm. So the world, the plagues, the mm -hmm. judgments of God will mm -hmm. bring the world in that condition. Yes. So by the time he comes to create a new heavens and a new earth, the world would have been formless because of his judgments. Yeah. But before he comes, you talked earlier on, and I want us to wrap up mm -hmm. this discussion on, that, on those two points. You okay. talked about the wrath of God being sparked by the fact that the world is now persecuting his children. Because mm -hmm. we are the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. And when we are touched, you have mm -hmm. touched the apple of mm -hmm. God's eye. Mm -hmm. So Matthew talks about, from verse uh, 8, mm -hmm. he says, these things we've been talking about are mm -hmm. the beginnings of sorrows. Mm -hmm. Which means this pregnancy is now being mm -hmm. delivered. Mm -hmm. Or the end is now here. Mm -hmm. They are now triggering a chain of events mm -hmm. that are leading us directly to the end of the world. And Ellen mm -hmm. White says the last events will be very fast ones. Repetition. So mm -hmm. verse, verse 9 says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, mm -hmm. and shall kill you. Mm -hmm. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. And then shall many be offended, mm -hmm. and shall betray one another, mm -hmm. and shall hate one another. I want to jump and then go to the last part, which is mm -hmm. verse 14, because we have discussed uh, verse 11. Mm. But verse 12, maybe verse 12, 13, and 14. And because iniquity shall abound, mm -hmm. the love of many shall draw cold. Mm -hmm. And he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world mm. for a witness unto the nations. And then shall the end come. So mm -hmm. Jesus is saying the coming of the end of the age or the world is not going to be by Putin blasting a nuclear mm -mm. bomb. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be an environmental crisis. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a depopulation of this earth by mm -hmm. all the oligarchies. Mm -hmm. The end of the world is a well-crafted event mm -hmm. that God is in charge of. Mm -hmm. And he has entrusted you mm -hmm. and me mm -hmm. to be partners in bringing it to the end mm -hmm. by preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. But then... As we do that, the preceding verses seems to be highlighting challenges mm. we will face. Maybe mm. walk us through those challenges, uh, the, the hatred and the persecutions, the betrayals, and the love of many growing cold and iniquity abounding. Walk mm. us through those challenges that we face All as right. servants and ambassadors of Christ. All right. So the, 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 first, the first aspect is the beginning of sorrows yes. and they will deliver you. All right. Mm -hmm. If you go to the book of Luke, uh, Luke explains how this deliverance will take place. Mm -hmm. The betrayal. Mm -hmm. It will start in the household. That is, the husband will betray the wife, and the wife, the husband. Mm. And then from the household, it will translate, translate into the church. Mm. Believers are going to betray each other. From the church, it will now be the community. Um, your neighbor will betray, mm. uh, uh, neighbors are going to betray each other. So there's a sequence to this. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if Every aspect of our lives will be tested. Mm. Every social attachment mm. will be tested. Mm. From the house, church, community, mm. and nation, mm. it will be tested. Every attachment. Mm. All right, so that's the first aspect. And then what is it that will cause this betrayal? Mm -hmm. It is the sword. The Bible Christ says, I'm bringing a sword. Between the, the offense and the daughter. The offense of the gospel, and it boils down to the fact that 
one party has embraced the gospel, mm -hmm. the other party has rejected the gospel. And that's the sword. That's the issue. Mm. Mm. Embracing the gospel and rejecting the gospel. Goes back to mm. Cain and Abel. Exactly. One worships mm. in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. The other worships in a different spirit mm, mm, and mm. not in truth. That is true. Perhaps is the true. spirit was right, but it yeah. was not in truth. Yes, that is correct. The zeal is there, but, yes, but not according obedience. to knowledge. Yes. Yes. That is true. So you are worshipping God, mm. but you're worshipping him on a wrong day. Yes. The zeal is okay, mm. but the day is wrong. Mm. The and knowledge. because the other one is doing on the Sabbath, mm. you hate each other. Mm. Mm. Not worshipping God in the truth, but in mm. the spirit. Mm. So that's, I like the way you've put it right there. Yeah. All right, so that's the first aspect, the, the betrayal. Mm. Um, all right, so the second aspect. So the second aspect is what will spark this. I, I mentioned earlier, it's the gospel. Yes. The gospel will be preached mm -hmm. in two ways. Mm -hmm. The gospel will be preached in two ways. Mm. It will be preached as a witness. I need to dwell on that. All right. Um, the gospel is, the question is, why is it preached for a witness? Mm. It is preached for a witness to prepare the people for the judgment. Yeah, God needs a, ju a witness in the judgment. Yes. It is preached so that he can prepare people for the judgment. That's what Peter says, by the way. Mm. It says the word was preached. Is, uh, it says the word was preached to the living and to the dead mm. so that they can stand in the judgment. Mm. That's what it's about. It's in mm. preparation. A witness, you need it in the judgment. Most, yes, come you testify see. about this guy's Exactly. Mm. Yeah, so... A, ja a witness, let me just look at this part, uh, just zoom in on this aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, it says the gospel will be preached for a witness. Mm. A witness testifies that which he has seen and heard. So people must hear the gospel and they must see it. Yes. Now, the gospel preached, the gospel lived. So this um, is a demonstration. The, 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 the word lived mm. now mm. Forms you can say it applies in the context of the great controversy. I'll explain what I mean by that. Mm. Context of the great controversy. In the in the great controversy, what God is waiting for now is yeah. for the vindication of His character. The revelation. So the gospel, the revelation of His character, and the yeah. vindication of His character. God has been accused of many things, so He must declare His innocence. He must prove that He's innocent, and the only way He will do it is not going to speak from heaven, mm. but He will do it through the lives of the people. So you and I. Yeah. So the whole creation waits for the manifestation mm. of the sons and daughters of God. Of God. Mm. Just, ju just, just, another, uh, uh, just, just another verse on this. Mm -hmm. If you go to the book of Ephesians, this is not only for us. Mm. The vindication of God, the witnessing, this is not only for us. Mm. And by the way, the witnessing is only made possible by the Holy Spirit if you go to the book of First yes. John and all of that. Yes. But if in the book of Ephesians now, mm -hmm. it is not only for humanity. Yeah. But this witness is mm. also mm. for the unfallen angels yes. and unfallen worlds. Yes. If you go to the book of Ephesians chapter mm -hmm. 3, mm -hmm. the Bible says here mm -hmm. in verse um, 5, mm -hmm. which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it now is revealed they unto his apostles, mm -hmm. holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, mm. that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and the partakers of his promise in Christ by the mm. gospel. Mm. Listen to verse 7. Mm. Whereof I am was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Mm. Verse 8. Unto me who am, who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace given mm. that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to, and to make all men see, see. for men. Mm. They must see yeah. what, what is, is the, the fellowship, fellowship of, of the, the mystery. mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hidden in God, God. Mm -hmm. who created all things by Jesus Christ, mm. to the intent mm -hmm. that, that now, now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places mm. might be known by the church mm -hmm. the manifold the wisdom of God. Of God. Mm. So this mystery, Christ has been a mystery. Yes, to many people. To many people in the olden times, that's why it says in other ages, he has been a mystery. Mm. But now he's been revealed through us. Mm. It is for men to see it. However, it doesn't end there. This revelation or this vindication of the character of God, mm. it is for principalities and powers in heavenly places. There is a knowledge of God they have not known. They have mm. not seen. Mm. And this knowledge is preserved for believers on earth. Mm. Mm. The manifold wisdom of Christ known by the church. Yes. So there's a special role the church must play in the end of time. 
The church must preach the word. Mm. Number one, the church must live, live the, the word. word. Yes. So that the angels can see an aspect of the character of God they have never seen before. Mm. And it's hidden in the intricacies of the gospel. Yeah. You see the glory is because the Bible says yeah. we must move from faith to faith. Yes. And glory to glory. Mm. That's what the Bible says in the mm. book of Peter. Yeah. Glory to glory. So there are glories mm. of God the angels do not know. Mm. Which will only be known and experienced and lived by people whose lives have been transformed by the gospel. The power of the gospel. Now listen to this. Revelation now says there are three angels. Mm. The everlasting gospel is calling us to those. Let me allow me to just unpack this. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I know if I, I you need a whole week. Yeah, to do no, this one I'm gonna be brief on this one. I'll be brief to, on this one. I want us to wrap this, and that, and I think we are, we are right at the pinnacle. Yeah, and I want you to wrap it up because I want to leave our viewers and mm. myself mm. challenged, motivated, mm. inspired mm. to know that the preaching of this gospel. Mm is the revelation of the mystery of God. Yes. And there's no higher calling mm. than the call to go and let someone know mm. about the great invitation God has given us. So I want you to wrap it up uh, very briefly. The power of God unto salvation, that is what the gospel is about. Yes. And the gospel in the end of time is calling us to fear God. Yes. Give glory to him and mm. worship him. Mm. This is only possible when the gospel has transformed the life. I'll prove it. Yes. Psalm 130 verse 4. Mm. It says, if you, Lord, can mark iniquity, who mm. shall be able to stand? Exactly. Listen to the next verse. Uh -huh. But yes. there is forgiveness with you yes. so that yes. you may be feared. feared. So fear is as a result of, being of conversion. Yes. Of being so you see the, the, the chronology there. Is there. Fear God. But these things are hidden, <laughs> man. These, are, these things are hidden. Yeah. So yes. th th that's what the gospel is calling us to. Yeah. So when we preach this three angels message, this is what we are doing. We are revealing the mystery. Yes. We are living the mystery by our lives. Yes. That's why to many people, our lives, that our, when our lives have been transformed by the gospel, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. We know you as this and that and that. What happened? Like they can't reconcile the two. It's a mystery. How has this happened? There are exactly. two mysteries yeah. that must be fulfilled mm. and they are going to work parallel. Mm. The mystery of iniquity it must and the mystery, be full. it must be full. It must and the cup of the mystery of, of godliness must be full. Must be full. Mm -hmm. That's what the gospel is calling us in this hour. Amen. The second angel comes and he says, Babylon is fallen. Mm. And then the third angel says, if any man worships the beast. Amen. And then the first angel is with a loud voice. Yes. Second angel, it seems as if he's quiet. Mm. The third angel is warning. with a loud voice, warning. Yeah. Did you know if that any. if any man, did you know that actually the second angel mm. is the loudest? Babylon Re is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Revelation 18 says, yeah. and I saw another angel yeah. ascending, that is in the midst of heaven, just mm -hmm. paraphrasing it. Yes. And the whole with the mighty power. And the whole earth was, was filled, filled with, power, with, his, with glory. his glory. That's correct. What the gospel has accomplished. Man, I, 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 I think we'll need to sit down and talk this in detail. <laughs> I'm not going to wait for you coming to Beggarsport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't wait for you coming to Beggarsport. So we are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Correct. And character, the revelation of God's character in us. Mm. People must know that God is real. He is alive in our lives and that they are being called to a higher calling. Yes. Thanks, my brother. I don't want to wait for the next flight to Beggarsport. You must have mm. the next flight. With you. <laughs> to our viewers out there, thank you so much. This is all we had with you. We've been discussing with evangelist uh, Baba Lovala from Cape Town. What a blessing it was. And I want to invite you as we pray at this moment. I'm sure you might have been challenged. You might have been wondering, Phew, what are these gentlemen talking about? I really need to do something about my life. Perhaps you're sitting in that space wondering, what can you do to be ready for the coming of Jesus? It's very simple, my friends. Confess his name. Go down on your knees and ask him to forgive your sins. And read your Bible and tell someone about this good news. And don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And the angels of God will be with you. So may the Lord bless you. I want to invite you as we close this meeting that we pray together. Would you mind praying for us, my brother? All right. Let us pray. 
Our dear, kind, loving Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of mercy, grace, and love at this hour. We want to thank you for the opportunity you have given us to sit and share Amen. your word. Amen. Thank you for the Bible. Amen. Lord, we pray for one thing, that you may help us to be the agents mm. of change in society mm. by preaching the gospel and by living the gospel. Mm. Bless us to arise and to shine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Done. Sure. It is done. My friend, thank you so much. You've taken your time to watch this video. You've been blessed. You've been wondering how do we get to create such videos and share them to you for free? No, 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 no. no. They are not for free, my friends. We do spend a lot of time, money, and equipment to generate these videos. And that's why I'm here to invite you, if you have not already done so, to subscribe to Melville Broadcasting Network particularly to join this YouTube channel and all our other platforms and send us your donations. So please click the join button and send us your monthly donations. You can also go to PayPal. If you're out of Africa or wherever, you can send us your PayPal donation. Just go to the details that we're showing you down there and send us your donations on a monthly basis. Obviously, we also have a bank account. I've put the details right there. Send us your donations so that we can do these and many more projects we have of quality media products. We really want to use this platform to prepare you, your family, your friends, and your colleagues to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. He is about to come. And this is a small opportunity you and I have to use your blessing to bless us that we may bless others. So God bless you as you consider sponsoring this ministry. Melville Broadcasting Network is a divine voice out of Africa. God bless you.